Hello. Today we're going to have a talk, a chat, you and I, about the topic narcissism. This is not a meditation. This is a quiet talk which may be used in order to unpack, unpack explore, consider a topic. Uh, this talk has not been planned. I will be using a quiet voice, so I suggest that you, I have a cup of coffee here, you get yourself a glass of water, a cup of coffee, perhaps sit down or lie down. I will be doing a meditation in the next couple of days. I have my sister staying with me at the moment, which is wonderful. Not so easy to record anything. And uh, yeah, I'm living in a, a new place, which is uh, really lovely. I've had a lot of requests to talk about narcissism. And this is a little bit of a, an evolving, unwinding talk exploration. So we'll be teasing out some issues. A point I have made before and I am making now is in life, there's some really tough adversity and most of us experience really tough adversity in different ways. It's important to look at your emotion, my emotion. Any time we feel strong, reactive emotion, it is always about us. If we are provoked by a particular event, occurrence, experience, relationship, we are allowing ourselves to be provoked. I want you to consider that point and explore that point and possibly journal about that point. There are some really terrible things that happen in the world really terrible things. I've experienced some of those things. And at times I might have clients or viewers say, but you don't know what I've gone through. No, I don't. I don't know what you've gone through. We have two choices. They're not easy choices. And the process of choice is not straightforward. The two choices are to fall apart, fall down and not get back up again, or to find ways to bumble forward, step forward, learn how to get up, process, develop a new skill. There are two choices. And of course we can divide those two choices into a number of different choices, being uh, when we learn to cope with a situation, that learning to cope may look like a number of different things. Learning to cope may look like taking five steps forward and then ten back and then starting again and again and again. There's so many ways to look at life. But at the end of the day, we choose to live or give up. I've also talked about trauma uh, in some ways. Trauma affects our body and is deeply scarring. The process of getting through trauma is a process. Healing is a process rather than a, um, an arrival. Oh, yay, we've got there, we've healed. It's a process. And as we heal, we become a different person forever, like a butterfly. 
in each moment we are a new sense of self, a new person, we organically grow, develop, shape shift. We are never the same person as we were a moment ago. So trauma affects who we are and trauma is significant and serious. And a person's journey through trauma is individual. Again, I've mentioned about these videos that these videos are what is called supportive therapy. You know, I have a master's in counselling, so I have some study in this area. But this video is not face to face. You are not here with me. I'm not working with a care team as I normally would at a workplace. This is a video. It is paramount that you, I, anyone, seeks direct face-to-face -face support through some of the issues of life. We are an evolution. We are not stagnant. We are not still. Change is occurring in each second, in each moment. One thing we can depend upon is that change continues. Saying that, let's explore narcissism. Narcissism is a complex topic and has a number of different variables. I want you to consider, I'd like you to consider the danger, the red flags, I'm not a keen one on the word red flags, the uh, uh, concerns involved in using the word narcissist or narcissism. People in life can display features, traits of narcissism. People can be diagnosed with narcissistic disorder. That aside, we, you and I, need to live. When we spend time labelling or naming somebody as narcissistic or a narcissist, it can at times minimise or edit our ability to be empowered and to cope. Now, I'm not saying don't do it. I am not saying don't label. I'm not saying don't look for a diagnosis. I'm saying, be careful. I'm saying, look at why. Examine why you, I, allow, enable our head, our mind to focus on certain things. I have experienced in my life, had personal experience with our uh, the diagnosis of narcissism. The person, the people I have been around, have personally experienced, has been devastating to me, has changed the landscape of my life. One takeaway I have achieved from that is that when I unpack what this person did, when I name this person, when I name their behaviours as narcissistic, I pigeonhole a very colourful history of experience. And each of us is so colourful. So I caution against too liberally using the word narcissist or narcissistic because you are amazing. You have this amazing brain. 
you have a hundred thousand ways of looking at anything. When we go, bang, narcissist, we are editing our ability to see so much in a situation. Labeling someone as a narcissist may be one page in a book of coping strategies. So let's look at the entire book rather than one page. If you've had an experience with narcissistic behavior or a narcissist, notice also any strong emotion. So any strong emotion you experience has a message in it about you or any strong, ex strong emotion I feel has a message in it about me. When we experience unpleasant behaviour, traumatising behaviour, adversity, we can choose over time, recruiting particular strategies to cope. When I say to cope, I don't mean jump up and down, do a dance and go yippee, yay, that's over. I mean the action of coping, getting back up slowly, again and again, seeking out resources, some work, some may not work, finding a way to be okay. Life is about finding ways to be okay. We have a sense of I, who we are. Then we, I, choose to think, choose to feel, choose to believe. Then our thoughts, beliefs, feelings may, dict may dictate or influence our language, our words. One of the dangers is that sometimes our words can dictate us. If we use one word to describe a complex phenomenon, a relationship, for example, if we describe a relationship as toxic, we lose the amazing power we have to learn from the intricacies of those many experiences. I'm not saying using the word toxic is bad. I'm not saying using the word narcissist is bad. I'm saying let's be careful. Why? Because we are incredible. You are incredible. Your brain is amazing. Your mind is limitless. When we take our mind and go, whoop, one word. Imagine your mind as a beautiful room with amazing windows and you can open the windows and let the space in. When we use one word to describe the experience, we close the windows and let out the light. So using one word, using a label, using a name is a process we consider carefully. Our mind is so precious, it is important that we consider where it's pointing. Where is it focusing? What are our thoughts? Why do we choose to think these thoughts? Why do we allow ourselves to think these thoughts? Now I use words such as allow and choice and I sometimes get comments from you and you may say or one of you may say it's not a choice, uh, I can't help it or uh, I didn't allow or I didn't enable. Uh, these words Enable, allow, choice are not simple words. I'm not talking about the choice of picking up an apple and crunching into that or biting that apple. I'm talking about the process of socialization, the process of groupthink, the process of being social. We are biologically, biologically social. With the landscape of socialization, choice becomes a complex process, not the action of picking up a piece of fruit and choosing to bite that fruit. Choice is learned. The process of learning is an unfolding. 
Life is not straightforward. It's not the action of opening and closing a door. It's a learning. When we are children, we learn from those around us. We pick up their values. We pick up their virtues. We internalize memory depending on a number of variables. Choice is learned. Choice involves personality. Personality can be learned. Choice is complex. The uh, process of being enabled or enabling is complex. The process of allowing is complex. It's not simple. Choice theory or glasses choice theory. So Glasser, G-L-A-S-S-E-R, created the cognitive behavioral, behavioral therapeutic framework choice theory. Uh, and that comes under CBT. It is a complex process. It isn't a matter of pointing, oh, she chose that. She chose to feel that. Feelings, choosing feelings is complex. Choosing to feel other feelings is complex. And that is what's amazing about who we are. We are an amazing, complex being. We are both social and conscious. We are incredibly pulled towards a need to be social biologically, to please others biologically, and that is ego. Ego is the social part of us. We cannot escape being social unless we are a sociopath or a psychopath. We have an intrinsic need to belong. We have an intrinsic need to please others. That is part of who we are. Now we can move away from that. We can monitor that. We can observe that. We can learn skills to move away from that. But we are intrinsically pulled to be social. It's important to look at that foundation that we are social and we are conscious. Coming back to narcissism. I've taken some notes, so I'm just going to have a look at them. The definition of being a narcissist. Again, I'm not keen with labeling someone as a narcissist. I do label at times. I attempt to look down and observe my labeling and question it. In society, we have someone diagnosed with bipolar, with narcissistic themes or traits. Diagnosis. Then we have our Western society, which is socialized to be quite narcissistic. And then we can have somebody without a diagnosis that can present with narcissistic themes. Then our egoic self has a natural tendency to be narcissistic in behavior as well. A uh, symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder is an inflated sense of self-importance. Now we each have a sense of self-importance because we want to be accepted by others. The purpose in life is to service others, to take care of others, to place the needs of the community before ourselves. Then our egoic self naturally and hormonally drives us to put up our hand and say, me, 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 I'm here, like me, find me attractive. We each have a level of narcissism within ourselves and our journey to enlightenment or our journey to wisdom involves the ability to own that. Saying that, someone with narcissistic personality disorder has an inflated sense of self-importance, a preoccupation with power, beauty or success. And that in itself is a conversation I could talk about for hours. They are entitled. They can only be around people who are important, egoically, socially, or special, egoically, socially. So when we use the word important or special, we mean in front of society. 
socially important, socially special, interpersonally exploitative for their own gain, exploits others for their own gain in ways that are not necessarily apparent to others. These people can mask. There is a sense of arrogance, which is focus on ego. They lack empathy. Now, what's really important to notice there or to focus upon there is that somebody who lacks empathy can still socially display features of empathy. So they mask and present as if they're empathetic and it's all pretense, all pretense. As a social being, we are driven to believe others. We're driven to believe a smile. We're driven to believe gesture. Socially, it's innate. Somebody with narcissistic personality disorder can act. They can smile from the outside when they're not smiling on the inside. They can learn to parody life a person they can learn to mask in order to get what they want. Somebody who's vulnerable, somebody who has been traumatized, may be more likely to believe the smile, to believe the act. And in that same way, someone who has personality disorder is more likely to seek out vulnerable, traumatized beings with a history of trauma. Someone with narcissistic personality disorder needs to be admired. What does it mean to be admired? It needs to be liked in certain subcultures, certain circles. The four Ds of narcissism, which are spoken about, is deny, dismiss, devalue and divorce. So somebody with narcissistic personality disorder will deny their behavior, deny what they're projecting, dismiss the views of another, devalue those around them, and divorce. That probably goes without saying. One of the aspects of this conversation I'd like to really focus upon. If you've experienced narcissistic behavior or you've been involved in a relationship where someone behaves narcissistically, it is really important to reach a point where you let go of the name, the label and the behaviors. I don't know when that is. There are times I still unpack it for myself at times. One of the issues about trauma is when we speak our narrative, so we speak about what's happened to us, we uh, internally unpack our trauma or share it with another person, we share the narrative. We relive the trauma and our body doesn't know the difference. Our body relives the trauma hormonally physically, spiritually. That doesn't mean we deny the trauma. It doesn't mean we don't talk about the trauma or we don't share the trauma. We just take a moment and think, do we need to relive the trauma by talking about it? Now, personally, I need to talk about my own experience of trauma at times. Question. Question whether you want your body to relive the trauma. So when we continue to <coughs> move forward talking about the narcissist, narcissistic behavior, we relive the trauma. Do we want to give that person displaying narcissistic behaviors the possible satisfaction of us reliving the trauma? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I would like you, I would like myself, I'd like us to reach the point where we let go of the label. Saying that, I watch a channel regularly, Dr. 
Romani. Uh, I think she's absolutely amazing. I love her work. I think she's brilliant. Uh, she uses the word narcissistic all the time and, and she needs to because she's describing a set of behaviours. Uh, I learn from her. I listen to her. There is a point in our healing journey when we let go of the words because we deserve to let go and we have value. You choose when to let go of that poison, that toxicity, that memory. Not easy, but you do deserve it. And you deserve to be bigger than your trauma and you deserve to be bigger than your experience. The experience I went through changed my life forever. I do reflect upon it. I am bigger than my experience. I have evolved through my experience. I have not forgotten my experience. I do reflect back upon that experience. I am ever evolving. You are ever evolving. Healing is not a matter of getting to a certain point. Yippee, yippee, we've got there. Another point to remember and just, just consider is that when we go to therapy, and I agree with therapy, we are doing what is referred to as doing the work. When we do therapy, we focus on self. Focusing on self is important so we can go back to the community and offer to the community. When we do therapy on self, we become egocentric. We focus on a sense of the individual away from the community, away from society. Yes, for healing, that's important. Yes, it's a balance. The more we do the work and the more we focus on self, the more we focus on self. The more we focus on self, the greater the propensity for us to be selfish. It's a balance. Doing the work, doing therapy is essential. The more we look at the colour yellow, the more we see the colour yellow. The more we forget the colour blue. Yes, we do the therapy. Yes, we do the work. Yes, we need to consider that this encourages a self-focus with a level of narcissism. We are all narcissistic in some shape or form. Every time we want to be seen by others, every time we want to people please, there is a grain of narcissism. And that's okay. Our ego has a trait, has certain narcissistic behaviours. As we grow, as we develop, we observe these and we unpack them, we consider them. Somebody with narcissistic personality disorder has an inflated sense of self. Consider a big balloon that's about to pop and is so big like an airbag in a car that you're kind of drowning behind this airbag, being suffocating, suffocating under the inflated sense of self. In Western society, especially at the moment, we are finding a growing trend of narcissistic narcissistic behaviours in parents, in children, in CEOs, in the workplace. Our Western society, with its focus upon speed, consumerism, owning red shiny cars, leaving relationships because somebody wants to be happy at the expense of family, we are becoming narcissistic as a culture. Now, the nature of society, there will always be a level of narcissism. But when we unpack narcissism, 
it's important to see that the ego is naturally narcissistic. Our society, Western society, is naturally narcissistic. Each of us is prone to some level of narcissistic behaviours. And then we have narcissistic personality disorder. Complex, colourful. What do we do about it? Only you know the journey that you are to, to take, to follow the path. I do believe it is important that we have one-on-one -on -one therapeutic support over time to help us understand boundaries, to help us recognise who we are and who we are destined to become, to help us recognise deal breakers, behaviours that are absolutely unacceptable, to help us understand and at times unpack our childhood, to help us understand our greater self, which is our communal self. Our purpose in life is to serve others, period. The only way we can serve others is to spend some time in solace by ourself, learning about our self. If you have experienced somebody with personality, narcissistic personality disorder, it is a, I'm not one for strong words, I'm going to use them, a horrific, destabilizing, hurtful, cruel experience. It's awful, awful. What are you going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Do we lie down and get into a fetal position and rock for the rest of our life? Do we become a shadow of ourselves? Do we take 10 steps back and stay there? What do we do? What do you do? We slowly brush ourselves off. We stand tall and we take an attempt at one step. That first step may be faltering. We may fall and then we get back up. We reach out to people around us. We seek out resources and we get back up. You get back up. In this process of healing, recovering from narcissistic abuse, it is a process. Consider the word process. It's evolving. There is no end date. And that's okay because we are a new person in each moment. Consider at times the quality of life. Life carries with it pain. Life carries with it loss, adversity, some of it unbearable. There are times in life where we may say, I can't believe I'm here. I thought I was this person. Now I'm here without this, without this, without this. I feel like I've lost my meaning. I feel like I've lost my purpose. What now? This happens. You may feel that your driving purpose in life is to be a parent and your children turn against you. You may feel that your driving purpose in life is to be a partner and your partner suddenly turns out to be deceitful in incredible ways. You may think your driving purpose is to have a particular role in a particular career and you lose your job or something happens. Terrible things happen to good people. That's our ground zero. That's the start of the race of life. Suggesting you have a cup of tea or a warm shower or a, 
uh, walk in the sun is not going to heal the adversity, but it could be the first step. It's a one percenter. The amazing thing about human beings, about you and I, is that we are resilient. We have an incredible, unlimited capacity to be resilient. I have gone through certain experiences that I have shared some of with you. My beautiful brother and best friend suicide, suicided, took his life after many years after an experience of sexual assault. One of my close friends died during surgery. One of my clients was murdered. Uh, my parents died in eight days. Um, I've had a very close and ongoing experience with someone uh, presenting with narcissistic personality disorder. This is my ground zero. This is the way I move through life. Do I manage it well? Not always. Sometimes I manage it well. Sometimes I cope. Sometimes I manage it poorly. This is the landscape of being human. You get back up. How do you cope with this? You can journal. You can go for a walk. You can definitely see a specialist. You can take one breath at a time. And you can pat yourself on the back for taking one breath. And then another breath. And then another breath. The nature of life is suffering. Why? Because our ego wants an arrival. Our ego wants permanence. Our ego wants nothing to change. Our ego wants that knight in shining armour and that arrival to the happily ever after. Our conscious self knows that everything changes. Our conscious self knows that we cannot control the feelings of another person. Our conscious self knows that we are mortal, our bodies decay and we die. Our conscious self knows that the best scenario for being in love, if you find your soulmate, one of you would die. There will always come a time of suffering. But life is precious. You are incredibly worthy, incredibly valuable. And your value does not depend upon the words or the labelling or the judgment of another. That is their narrative. And if you spend time thinking about their narrative, you are losing precious breaths, experience of each breath. You are amazing, no matter the words of another. So we can unpack narcissism and have a chat, but do we let it dominate our lives? Do we let it dictate who we are? I don't think so. You have too much worth. Thank you for following me on Patreon. Thank you for using my services uh, as a counsellor. You can book me as a counsellor on Simply Book Me. Thank you for listening to my meditations and my Apple podcast. Sleep Meditation with Lauren Nostoski fenton You have the ability to unpack life. You have the ability to analyse and reflect. You are an amazing computer and you can reprogram yourself. I believe in you.